So a few days ago, I saw this tweet post, and then I checked out the article, and the article was written by Justin Chavez from Reverie Labs. And the article was about building web applications for drug discovery using Streamlit. And so as I was scrolling down through the article, I saw that there is this code which allows you to build a application that will essentially display the FDA approved compound data sets. And so you can see here that in this implementation, you're able to filter the compounds according to the molecular weight. And so the value shown at the bottom here and the slider bar here was used to set the threshold for the molecular weight of the data sets. And then only the ones that are less than the specified value are shown. And so in this tutorial, we're going to be implementing this, but then we're also going to be modifying this as well. And so in this video, I will show you the original application first, and then I'm going to modify that. And then I'm going to show you the modified version as well. And then I'm going to go over the code. Okay, and so let's get started. So the code that we copied from this particular text box of the blog post is provided here in the original app.py file. So let me open up the terminal. And then I'm going to the desktop, going to Streamlit folder, going to the drug discovery data folder, and then we're going to run it by typing in Streamlit, run, and then original app.py. Oh, but then I have to activate Conda first on the activate data professor. So for your case, activate your own Conda environment. And my Conda environment is called data professor. And so the environment is activated and then let's run the app again. So it is streamlit run and then original app.py. And then in just a moment, the app will be loaded up. And here we go. This is the application. And so you can see here that this is the threshold and the values shown right here is the molecular weight in the Dalton unit. And then in the data frame here, the molecular weight is shown in this particular column. And so you can see that if we adjust the value here, the number of compounds will also be adjusted and will be updated and shown below here. And then a nice feature here is the use of the moles grid library, which allows you to display this particular grid of molecule which will span several pages, as you can see here, all right? And so it, if you click on the subsequent pages, it will be updated. So here you see that there are thousands of compounds here, all right? And so this is the FDA approved drug data sets shown on this particular web application. And so let's go back to the code. And so let me show you the app that we're going to be building today. So this is the code and let me find let me deactivate this and then I'm going to activate my code, which is app.py. Wait a few seconds. All right. And now it's loading up. All right. And so this is the app that we're going to be building today. And so it's going to look similar to the prior one that you have saw from Justin. Uh, for this one, we made some modifications. So here we're going to display the number of rows and the number of columns right here. And then the data frame that you see here will be the same. And then the mole grid here will be the same. But then what will be different is right here. So aside from allowing you to filter according to the molecular weight, we're also going to be adding additional molecular properties, which will constitute the Lipinski rule of five, which is a rule used in drug discovery to determine whether a compound is drug-like or not. By being drug-like, it means that they need to have the following values well within the threshold. And so the threshold for a compound to fall within the rule of five is to have a molecular weight of less than 500 Dalton, a log p value of less than five, number of hydrogen bond donors of less than five, and also number of hydrogen bond acceptors of less than 10. And so I'm setting these value as the default, as you can see here. And so you're more than welcome to modify the threshold as you see fit. And so you could also increase it to beyond the rule of five, which is still okay because most drugs are falling within the rule of five, but then one or two parameters could exceed the rule of five. That would be acceptable. 
And so as you adjust the value here of the filter, you see that the mold grid table here will be updated in real time. And another neat feature is that you could also see the number of compounds that are displayed in the data frame. So having this is going to be handy in order to see how it impacts the number of compounds that are displayed here. Okay, so this might be handy in allowing you to document that for a particular threshold value, this results in, in the removal of a particular number of compounds. Okay, and so let's go to the code and I'm going to show you a line by line explanation. All right, and so this is the original comment from the app developed by Justin. And so here we're going to be importing the necessary libraries. And so this includes the moles to grid, which allows you to see the particular grid of the molecule. And we're using pandas in order to display the data frame, as you can see here. And then the streamlit library will be used for the web application development. And the components here will be used as well, as you can see at the bottom, we're embedding in HTML function, the most to grid feature here. And we're using the RD kit, which allows us to compute the descriptors comprising of the molecular weight, the log P, number of hydrogen bond donor, and also the number of hydrogen bond acceptor, which are the Lipinski rule of five descriptors. And so that is made possible by using RD kit to compute the following descriptors, as I have mentioned. All right, and then on lines number 12, we will be printing out the title of the web app, which is here, Filter FDA Approved Drug by Lipinski's Rule 5 with Streamlit. And then on lines 14 until 17, we're going to be printing out in Markdown the credit of the app. And so here I'm specifying that the app was modified by myself and that the original app was made by Justin Chavez. And on line number 19, we're going to be using the st.catch in order to catch the data so that we won't have to reload the data every time the app is updated. And so the data is taken from this particular website. So let me show you the contents. Let me copy and let me paste it here. And so you can see here that it is a simple text file comprising of the following three columns. The name of the FDA approved drug, whether the CNS drug label is true or false, and also the smiles notation. And so this will be read into a data frame by using pandas read CSV. And then we're going to be dropping any missing values. And the following lines from 27 and beyond here until 46, we're going to be creating some custom function that will allow us to compute the molecular descriptors, which are the Lipinski rule of five descriptors. And we're using the RD kit function, exact mole weight, mole of P, number of hydrogen bond donor, and num hydrogen bond acceptors, which are imported from rdkit.chem.descriptors. And so these functions will be embedded inside each of the following four custom function, which are called calculate MW, calculate log P, calculate num H donor, calculate num H acceptor. And all of them will be accepting the smile string as an input. And so as an example, a smile string will look something like this. And so a smile string is essentially a string that encodes for the chemical structure of a molecule. And so this is an example of a smile string. And so you can notice here that the middle component here has four carbon atoms. And the C1 at the beginning and at the end is essentially the same atom. And so it is not comprising of six atoms, but then it is comprising of five. And so this is encoding for a five member ring comprising of carbon atoms. And so this particular smile string will be used as input for calculating the four descriptor that I have mentioned. And they will be displayed in the web application in the following columns here. And then I will show you how you could selectively display the numbers of the molecular weights or and also the log P or the number of hydrogen bond donor or even all of them if you want. But then it will make the table a bit more messy. Okay, and so once we have defined the custom function for calculating the descriptor, on line number 50 until 54, we're going to be performing the actual calculation. And then we're going to be assigning it into its own unique column. 
in the data frame. And then they are displayed here, as you can see. And then the data set will be obtained from the website here that I have mentioned and I have shown you right here. And so this particular data will be read in into DF and then it will be displayed right here. So you can see that it comprises of the following generic name column, CSS drug column, and also the smiles column. And then you can see that it contains four additional columns, which is added here on lines number 51, 52, 53, and 54. And so each of the columns will be added upon using the calculating function of the molecular weight, of the Moloch P, of the number of hydrogen bond donor, and also the number of hydrogen bond acceptor. And so they're using the SMILES column as an input in order to generate the particular molecular feature and then add it into the data frame. So you can see here, four additional columns are added. And then on line number 58 until 87, we're going to be defining the sidebar panel as you will see here if you click on it. So line number 58 will be the sidebar header, which is set parameters. And then on line number 59, we're going to be printing out the notes. And then we have a single asterisk here in order to allow it to be in italic text mode. And then lines number 60 until 66, we're going to be defining the sidebar slider, as you see here, for the multiple weights. And then on line number 67 until 73, it is the slider for the Moloch P. And then on line number 74 until 80, it's going to be the slider for the number of hydrogen bond donor right here. And then lines number 81 until 87, it's going to be the slider for the acceptor, okay? And then on lines number 89, 90, 91, and 92, we're going to be creating a variable called DF results and also variable sequentially called DF result two, three, and four. And so on line number 89, it will essentially be applying the filter as dictated by the slider here. And so upon modifying the number in the slider, let's say it is 420. And so the value of 420 will be here. And so if molecular weight has a value of less than 420, so the number of rows will be updated. And so only rows having molecular weight of less than 420 will be displayed. And for those having a value of molecular weight greater than 420 will not be displayed. And so line number 90 will be essentially taking the same data from 89, but then we're going to be shifting the next filter criteria, which will be log P, okay? So if we set molecular weight to be less than 420, so we're gonna fix that, and then we're gonna proceed to the next step, which is the log P. And if we specify to be minus two, then it has a value of less than two, it will be displayed in the updated data frame. And then the number of compound will be lesser than before, okay? So let me show you. Let me start this fresh, okay? Let's load it up a bit. All right, here. So you can see here that at default, there are 1,100 compounds. And let's say that I modify the molecular weight to be 400. Let's see how much it will change. One moment. And so if it's 400 for the molecular weight, so you can see that 949 compounds will remain here. And so we have already removed about 150. And so we're gonna take this data frame with 949 and then we're gonna use it here and then we're gonna apply the log P as the filter, okay? And if the filter is, let's say, modified to be a value of two, then from 949, it will be removing additional compounds. And so let's see how much are removed. So over 500 are removed and we have a remaining of 477 and et cetera. And then we select this particular data frame and then we move it to the next line right here. See, because we're using DF result two, which is right here, and we're using it as the starting basis for three. And then we're going to define the next feature, which is the number of hydrogen bond donor. And if I modify the number to be another value, let's say if it's less than, then the number of compound will be updated. And so if I increase the limit here, the number of compound will also increase, okay, because the criteria has been relaxed. And so on line number 94, we're going to be printing out the shape of the DF results for variable. And so let's see that, which is right here, okay? ST.write here, ST.write DF result for is the data frame that you see here, okay? And now here comes the fun part for 
the mole to grid right here. So we're assigning it to the raw HTML function, which will then be used for the component. And the component here will be using an HTML function, which is right here. The HTML function will be displaying the raw HTML, which is the mole to grid display. And we set a width of 900 and a height of 1100 in order for this to be shown. And so we're essentially embedding an HTML code right inside this particular window. So let me show you if I adjust this to be fewer than 1100, what will happen? Say 400. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Yeah, so when I modify it to be 400, you see that the multi grid view seems to be cut off here, right? If we increase it back to 1100, then you're going to see that the multi grid here will be displayed in the full capacity. Okay, and so let's have a look back here. So in the raw HTML function, we're going to display the mode to grid and the data that are used for the display is the DF result for which is the data frame that has gone through four filtering of the four molecular feature. Okay, and then the subset of data that will be displayed is right here, not, which includes the name, the image of the compound, and also the molecular weight. And so you're going to see that it is right here, the name of the compound, the image of the structure, and then the molecular weight. Let's say that if I take away IMG, what happens? And then I update the code, and then let's wait for it to load. And then you're going to see that the image of the chemical structure disappears. And so the only thing that remains are the name and the molecular weight, which is still in the list here in the subset. Okay. And I could also change the ordering. Like for example, I might want to display the structure first, IMG, and then save it. And let's have a look again. And so the chemical structure should appear before the name. Right, so the chemical structure appears and then followed by the name and followed by the molecular weight. And if I would like to add the other columns here, like log P, I could do that as well. I would add log P. And then the log P value should be shown below the molecular weight, right? And it is, it's right here, okay? And so I could add all of the values right here as well, like number of hydrogen bond donor. Let's do that number of hydrogen bond donor, and then the number of hydrogen bond acceptor. Save it and wait for it to upload and update. And then you're gonna see that okay, it has all of the data, right? So why don't I save this and then I'll share this on the GitHub of Data Professor, and I'll provide you the link to that in the video description. All right, and here it comes the other interesting part is that you could also modify the name. Like for example, the original data frame has the name of smiles to be in the small character. But then let's say that I want to modify it to have uh, using bigger letters like right here, smiles. All right. Okay. And so if you're okay, and so here, go, okay. And so this is the Lipinski rule of five modification to this awesome web application. And so kudos to Justin Chavez for developing the original web application of this drug discovery web app using Streamlit. And actually the data which is used for this web application could also be modified. For example, if you don't want to use the FDA approved data set, you can modify it with another data set that I have shown you in the bioinformatics from scratch series. And so you could use the custom data that you got from that particular tutorial series. And I'm going to provide you the link to that bioinformatics from scratch series for you to follow if you haven't yet watched it. And so it's going to show you how you could download your own unique biology data set in order to use it for your data science project or bioinformatics project. And you could use that data set as the underlying data set for this particular application. And so this particular web application developed by Justin is a great way to look at the data set, look at the structure while you filter the particular features that are available in the panel here. And so aside from the Lipinski rule of five, you could also come up with additional descriptor that you compute using the RDKit library. 
And so let me know in the comments down below whether you found this particular web application useful or how you intend to modify this web app. And also please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.